here you have a situation where a minute ago she's telling me how she liked this dude's confidence and then the fact that he's confident and the, on the front he goes you know she she goes oh, i don't know he's too confident i think he's going to be a player i go you are reading way that women are not accustomed to any level of, of rejection and so they're avoiding rejection so they're thinking all of these six seven different ways from sunday the point is that if you're gonna if you're gonna be in a situation where you have these questions you could just ask the question you can ask the question i'm not an alpha male i'm not a beta male either i'm just a better man better man this is something I wanted to share with you. It's something I see. I like seeing things in the wild that I could bring back so that we could study it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, this is somebody, and you know this person, um, and I'll, I'll give you the name after. I should have given you the name beforehand. I was at a comedy club, and this was female comedian was on stage, and uh, she was, she's a friend of ours, and she's doing her thing, and she was flirting with this guy you know, from the crowd. She's doing a little bit of crowd work. She's like, what do you do? He's like, oh, I'm a chef, yada, yada, yada. It's like, oh, okay. And she's pretending to unbuckle her pants. To get, she gets laughs and all that. Mm. She comes backstage, right? And she goes, uh, oh, man, he's cute. He goes, I don't know what I should do. I go, well, why don't you just do what any, I go, why don't you just do what any, like, male comedian would do, which is you go wait by the front of the thing and then you pretend like you're just hanging out there. And then hope that he comes up to you and make or make conversation. Right. She goes, really? I could do that? I go, yeah. Why, why can't you do that? You know, yeah. like, you know, you deserve uh, just as amount. Of, you, deserve, you deserve love, too. You should go do it. She's like, I don't know. I'm nervous. I go, just fucking do it. She's like, ah, yeah, he was kind of cute. And he was real confident with the way he answered. You know, I asked him what he did. And he's like, oh, I, oh, I, uh, I run restaurants in the Caribbean or whatever. Right. So I go, if you like the guy, just fucking go do it, right? right. So she goes to the she goes to the front, the end of the show. She comes back, and um, she I go, what what happened? Did you hang out? She goes, yeah, I hung out there, and three of his friends, they were all females. They brought him to me, and they were like really pushing him towards me. They were excited, and uh, but he was like too eager, like he was like, hey, how you doing? He was a little too smooth. I don't know if I like that, and. So here you have a situation where a minute ago or a half an hour ago, she's telling me how she liked this dude's confidence from mm -hmm. the audience. But the fact that he was like aggressive, um, she didn't like that, that he was like confident. In one hand, she likes that he's confident. And then the fact that he's confident and the, on the front, he goes, that's, confident. <laughs> that's too smooth. I don't like that it was too smooth. That might mean that he's a player. I go, or it doesn't. You know, or and then he was like a little shy oh, and weird. What happened? Or he's confident. <laughs> or he's confident, right? Like, and I'm gonna send you the name here just to, you know, there we go. I just texted you the name. So, uh -huh. so she is like, you know, she she goes, oh, I don't know, he's confident, and I uh, he's too confident. I think he's gonna be a player. I go, you are reading way too much. And there's some other girls in the thing. And they're like, yeah, maybe. But, you know, here's what you could do. You could just go to his Instagram. Did you exchange Instagram information? You could go there. You could stalk him and see if he's married. See all, see, and then check all the tags. Like they're teaching me all these things that they do, which is they put your name and they can check all the pictures you're tagged in in case a guy wants to be smooth and just, you know, not tag his wife. Or not be in any pictures with his wife, but Wait, you can see. You send me the name. I sent you on a private chat. You see the private chat on the oh, top. Oh, let's see. Let's see. We're practicing get this guy. So this is like a bonus bonus. Here we go. Uh, see, at the top left hand side. Yeah, I see it. Oh, okay. All right. Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's my girl too. Yeah, and so I was just like, "What the you you know." I go, you guys are just way overthinking this. He goes, I don't know. It could be, it could be like that he might be married or some shit. I go, or it or, could just be that he was nervous to say hello, or he felt weird with four people, or he does, he's shy in public, or a thousand other he's things. A celebrity on stage and yeah. he doesn't know, or right. he doesn't want to be part of your act, or you're prettier than he's accustomed to. 
And so, you know, eventually, you know, she looks at the Instagram and then she goes, oh, he's like, oh, this, oh, he really knows how to cook. He's a chef for real. Okay. I definitely want to go out with him. Like, so my point is this, as I'm telling this story and even as I say it, it's confusing and annoying because that was the thought process that she had. Right. It went from, who's this guy? I don't like him. He's too cocky to, oh, he is. I like that he's confident. Oh, it's too much that he's too... He's a little he's too cocky. He might be a player. He could be. I want to, wait a minute. He's a chef. I don't know if I should talk to him. He's a, mm. married. He could be a, all this stuff. And I go, just look at these. Are, I go, you know what's great? These are all questions you could ask him if you go and talk to him on Instagram since you exchanged Instagram information. So just do that. And then finally, like, but it took, it's just, just the, the whole point of this story is that women are fickle. Because they have so many options, they can overthink and overprocess all of this, all of this stuff. And that's what you're dealing with. That is what you're working with. These are the factors that you have no clue about. And that doesn't even factor in whether or not this girl has been through something emotional that day or half an hour or if work was tough. It's just you don't know what you're dealing with. You deal with a lot of inconsistencies. All you could do, guys, is be the best version of yourself, and that's it. Right. And then some things oh, yeah. you can't control. First thing is, do you have to understand that women are not that women are not accustomed to um, any level of of, uh, of rejection. And so they're avoiding rejection. So they're thinking all of these six, seven different ways from Sunday. What's interesting is guys do the same thing. Like guys will go, well, she liked my Instagram page, but when I call her, she doesn't pick up the phone. Da, 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 da. And it could be any number of things. The point is that if you're gonna, if you're gonna be in a situation where you have these questions, you could just ask the question. You can ask the question is what you said. Yeah, exactly. You can find out. But the guys do go through this. I will say in defense of guys, and it's rare that we defend guys on this show. Um, but in defense of the guys, you deal with a lot of rejection. So I understand that from their nature. I think right. we, we, we're, women are doing the same thing, but it's from a whole other level. It's because they're selective and choosy, I guess. They have the option. Because guys don't have that option, so guys are accepting a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of shit that they, you know. Every once in a while, my girl will point at another girl because one time I told her, one time there was this girl who was not particularly good looking, um, right. and she goes, you know, my girl's like, ew. I go, well, you know, listen, somebody's got to do her. She goes, would <laughs> you do her? I go, well, in a pinch. <laughs> right? And she goes, what does that mean? I go, it means, you know, if you're in a situation where you're on a. a if I'm in the woods and I got to eat. Yeah. I might. Well, I might eat yeah. rat. <laughs> I'm not proud of it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't serve rat at a dinner party where I invite my friends. I would eat it quietly and not tell anybody. But, yeah, if I had to. And she was just like shaking her head. I go, well, must be nice. Must be nice. Rat. I go, that must be. One time she goes, you know, I was joking about like some dude fucking his cousin or whatever. She goes, ew, like, ew. I go, well, must be nice to be able to turn down your own cousin just because it's your cousin. She goes, for real? I go, I'm not saying I would do it a first cousin, but a second cousin I might. I don't know. You think about it. I'm not, I'm not even third for sure. Third, that's. That's like a neighbor. Yeah, third. I don't even think that shows up on your 23 and me, a third cousin. <laughs> but the point is that, you know, women have that. They have that option, so they get to be picky. I, don't, you, I was interrupting you, Dante. What were you saying? If you love what we're doing here, go to Patreon.com. It's the best way to support us and check out all the bonus content. That's right. Patreon.com slash Manschool202. We do weekly bonus episodes. We do listener mail, dating tips, and also, if you love the show, you can go back to the archive starting from episode one. All the episodes will be there at patreon.com slash manschool202. No, no, well, I, what I was going to say is one of the main reasons when I talk about laying the five bricks, right? Paying compliments five a day without the first phase of that is to not try to get the number, right? And the reason why the reason why I 
I at the first phase of the program, I put guys through so that they can be more social and get more opportunities and get more girls. Is the first step is to pay a compliment to a, to five women a day every day, not just the ones you want to sleep with, the just older, younger, middle aged, whatever, attractive, unattractive, whatever it is, and you're just supposed to pay a compliment that's honest, right? non-sexual and you're not allowed to get the number at least on the first phase and the reason why it's important to not get the number is because when you are trying to get the number now the the, the social engagement is transactional and the and because it's transactional you get that thing well he's he's too cool and i know that there's something at risk and because there's something at risk and you think that you, I mean, when it, when honestly there is nothing at risk, you don't know if this woman likes you or doesn't like you or whatever, but the minute that you find her attractive and you're approaching her and your intention is to get the number, you have put the, the cart before the, you put the cart before the horse and now you have anxiety because there's a possibility the objective that you're putting out there will not well, you, you won't reach that, that objective. And, and then you have to deal with the failure of not, not achieving the objective that you want, that, that you set out to do. And once you do that, now there's, there's, you start to feel insecure. You start to feel that you, you, you're, you're, there's a fear. You institute emotion into the context of, of that social interaction. And because you institute that into the, the, the interaction, now there's fear. Now, what do I say all the time about fear is never let fear have a, have a seat at the table. And the reason why you, can't, you don't have a seat, you can't have fear, you can't allow emotion to have a seat at the table because the minute you allow motion, emotion in, you're going to allow your 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 cutting down your proficiency as a as your brain proficiency your whatever ability you have to be social is cut down to a third because now there's fear and anytime fear exists you have that fight or flight instinct and what happens is the blood is not flowing in your brain it's flowing in your, you you have fear and you can't think clearly so whatever you are good at, you're going to be two thirds less good at it the minute that you have fear. And the fear, what does the fear come from? The fear fr comes from, I'm trying to reach, I'm trying to achieve a particular objective, and I may not achieve that objective. Therefore, I'm afraid that I might, I might fail. Now, it's when, if you're just communicating, if you're just being social. For the sake of being social, because you're a human being and somebody else is a human being, you come off less desperate. It's the thing where they tell you that the best type of acting is when you're no not acting. doing any acting. Exactly. You're right? just being. You're just being. And that's the idea is you want to get to a place where you're comfortable just you're, where you don't have to act. You don't have to think about all that, that, that stuff. Right. Right. And so, you know, that's what the idea is. Just, it's sort of like playing with no fear. I know for me, you know, now, I mean, I'm not single anymore, but at the end of my run, I did not have any fear of asking a woman for her number or asking her out. Because even if she said no, I was not heartbroken because I knew, all right, I'll find somebody else or it's her loss. And I j legitimately felt that way. Like, ah, what are you going to do? Yeah. Shit, man, that would have been fun, but too bad. And you, it builds. It's uh, you go step by step until you build to that. But again, the best acting is no acting at all. Like you're, right. you're saying, it's the best game is no game at all. It's not where you're trying to trick somebody or convince somebody or make it look like I'm cool. No, it's just building yourself up so that you're happy to be you, so that you do feel cool or you do feel like it's their fucking. You don't even feel cool. It's just it's a it's a it's a no feeling thing more than anything it's else. It's just yeah, just. And then when somebody, and then if she, if she intrigues you or she makes, you know, you, oh, wow, she's interesting. And then, well, tell me more. Then, then you start to, but the, the problem is the minute the girl is attractive, they, a guy finds her attractive, they, they're ready to sell the farm 
because she's attractive. And I've said this over and over. She could be attractive and be a horrible human being. She could be bipolar. She could be schizophrenic. She could have multiple STDs. You are assessing this person um, based on looks alone when looks alone doesn't tell the, the full story. In fact, looks don't even matter. If you really want to talk about it, looks don't matter. If, the, if, you, you, if, she, if she looks great, and then she's a, a serial killer or a schizophrenic, paranoid schizophrenic. It doesn't matter how attractive she is. You're never even going to get to the point where you're intimate with this person. Um, if, she's, if she's got eight, what was that chick that slept with, uh, with, with Kobe Bryant? They said they found, uh, they found four different sperm samples in her, in her panties. And you're like, uh, but it's like... Um, how I don't care how hot she is, like that's disgusting. And maybe it's not disgusting to everybody, but to me, it, that could be anybody at any given time. Um, but you get to decide what your levels are and what what you're okay with. If you're sure. if you're fine with your chick being on OnlyFans, that's fine. If you don't like it, you can just. But what you can't do is tell her that she has to stop. If you you know against yeah. her will, you just go. If you don't want to, it's up to you. I don't like it. If you want to stop, I would rather you stop. If not, I'm out. That's it. Yeah. You can set that, but you I can't make know. you can't if bend somebody's will. Stop, I just go. I I don't even I don't even think that you should ask her to stop. If this is what she's doing, assume you should assume that that's what she wants to do, right? I mean, when you get yeah, people do what they want to do. When when agency is not watching, right? They do what they want to do, especially something like OnlyFans or something like that, because you, you have to make an effort to do that. So we have to assume that that's what you want to do if you're making that effort. I don't care what anybody says. You, I mean, and I've said this a hundred times. You, we're in a situation where you over and over again, people don't understand that people do what they want to do and they don't do what they don't want to do. So, um, you know, if she's doing OnlyFans, and you don't like it, you should leave. You go look. I'm, I, I think it's best I make I move. I get I get I keep I get it moving, because I'm not really happy with this. Now, if she says this is why I say don't make, don't give ultimatums because that's an ultimatum. Make ultimate. Don't give ultimatums. Make ultimate decisions. You make your decisions based on what, the information that you have. Now, if somebody says. If, if you say if, if you go, I'm leaving and she goes, but I, I don't want you to go. Why? And and you say, well, I'm just you know, I'm just not cool with you showing your body. And clearly this is what you want to do. So it's I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but I, I just don't want to be part of this. Then she can say, I, well, I don't care about this only fans. I don't really make that much money anyway or whatever she wants to say. Or she could say, well, I, I would rather be with you than be at, at, at you know. Do OnlyFans, but at least you are presenting your your non-negotiables first, and then she's responding to it. Forcing somebody to do something. It's it's right. it's just it's just you see how much they give a shit about right. your position in it right off the top. And you can see it by what the response is. If she said, if you go, if you go, hey, um, I'm gonna go, and she goes, all right, see you later. And you go, for good? And she goes, for good? And you go, yeah, pretty much. And then she goes, but why? If she doesn't ask you why, it's because she doesn't want to know why. You got to understand that, that she's not asking you because not because she forgot. She's asking you because she doesn't care. It's the same way when you stop texting her. That's when you find out if she cares. If she, look, if I stop texting my girlfriend, like right now, we live in the same house. Eventually, she'd be like, "Hey, why did? Why are you not texting me all day?" Right? It, Call me back. I haven't. I haven't heard from. We live in the same house. I haven't heard from you in five days. I'd be like, "Well, I don't." I don't know. Yeah. And oh, she's calling. Back. She's calling back. I mean, I used to I used to say if it was Drake, but I don't know. <laughs> like, uh, um, but, but I, I mean, love that yeah. David Spade joke. I don't know if you've ever seen that David Spade joke where he talks about like, 
you know, you get the chick's number, you text her, then three days later she texts you back like, cool, huh? Question mark. Another three days. And then you finally she's like, oh, I'm just so bad at texting. Finally, you take her out to dinner. She's at the table. You're like, yeah, yeah. like oh, you've, oh, I see somebody picked it up all of a sudden. Somebody they learned. They make time for what's important and they, and they don't for what they don't. And if they don't see you as important, they're just not going to make time for you. And if they're not making time for you, understand. You, this is where we talk about authenticity in the context of yourself. She's not texting you because she doesn't want to talk to you. The same way if some chick who was a, well, some girl who was a burn victim is texting you trying to trying to meet up, you might be like, I, I, yo, I'm not, I'm not for this. I mean, like, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I don't want to date uh, Frida Krueger. Oh, I'm, I'm good. <laughs> this is not my vibe. This is not my scene, man. Not my, not my jam, you know. It's not my jam. But I, I think, I mean, but we have to be honest with ourselves about that. You, if you, it, you know, and I've, I've done multiple consultations where a guy says, you know, I do this, I do that. And my, my wife doesn't really care. She doesn't really appreciate it. Yeah, because she don't care. Like, yeah, you're right. She doesn't care. How can I make her care? You can stop doing it. Yeah. And then you find <laughs> out if she cares. Yeah. Yeah. Find and then out if she goes, why don't you do this? And you go, well, you don't seem to appreciate it. Yeah, so. that's how you, I mean, all the boundaries are just, it's all a contract negotiation is what we forget. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. it's like you put something in there and it's the non-negotiables. It's just negotiated. Yeah. The problem is we've been taught about compromise and I see it like all the time is that dudes, you know, the compromise is that you just do what she I'll, says let and me she do what shuts she up. So I can get, or so I can get the butt. Let me... Let me yeah. compromise everything that I am so that she has sex with me. And then you set this precedent and then you wonder why this is the, your relationship for the rest of your life. I remember, do you remember we had Mike Yard on the show and Mike Yard, yeah. uh, he goes, he banged this girl one time and, uh, and then, uh, you know, like the next day she's like, listen, I'm gonna need you to pick up my laundry and uh, get my, my, pick up one of my kids from school. He goes, oh, when we start doing that, he, and she goes, don't act like you ain't pussy whipped. <laughs> After one time, he's like, "What?" Now, here's what's interesting, even about that, is that the reference to you being pussy whip also states that I'm taking advantage of you. Yeah, I'm taking advantage of you, and you know it, but you can't do nothing about it. And so, go pick up the damn kids. Like, yeah, you know, it's shitty. It's shitty. Respect her honesty, though. Jesus, Jesus, she was flat. Mike was like, it was trash. <laughs> it's, but if some, if there's plenty of guys who kind of feed into that because they don't have options because they don't know what their value is and they, they haven't really learned how to build confidence and understand uh, confidence comes, um, the, you know, the confidence comes, I understand something. Your value is what you do, not who you are. It's not based on who you are. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first, because if you don't, they won't.